Today is a gorgeous day in the Fremont Winema National Forest in South Central Oregon. So we thought we would take advantage of that by going on a walk with our dog, Sweetie. And don't worry, we are walking in the middle of the National Forest, but got our bear spray, <laughs> so should be safe. Yes. But we are also gonna take this opportunity to explain to you something that kind of weird happened to us yeah it's something that we knew would happen eventually because we've you know heard stories from other RVers of odd things happening to them and we knew that it was just a matter of time until something kind like of, that happened to us kind of weird happened to us so let us tell you <laughs> the story of what happened yesterday So for those of you that have been following us, you know that our favorite way to RV is to camp out in free land, whether that is uh, national forest, BLM, you know, county parks. The boondocking experience is for us, and that is our favorite way to stay. We've been doing it for about a year now, so Jenny has gotten very good at finding us spots that we're allowed to stay in for a certain amount of time, be it a week or two weeks, and she can find all the rules and regulations that we need to follow and which is why i make campsite reviews because i find all this information yeah. on a place that took me quite a while to find so why not share it with you guys exactly so what happened to us yesterday is you know we're just hanging out in the rv just living and this person just drives down the road and they slow down start creeping by and they're just staring at our RV, just creeping by at like one mile an hour, just like giving a look like this. <laughs> and then they come to a complete stop. And I'm looking at them out the window and I'm like, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. Now, mind you, they can't see us. Our windows are tinted, yeah. so we can peek on everybody that's driving by. <laughs> so she hops out, comes to the door, and this is a, about a 50-year-old woman. Yeah, 50. Yeah. And she's by herself and she says, you know, excuse me. So we opened the door, We're like, yes, what she's, is it? She seemed friendly, you know, I, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't really know what she was gonna say, so. Yeah, and she basically just says, you guys need to leave. Yeah. And. In not the nicest way, yeah. saying that if we don't, she's going to make sure that authorities come out and yeah. fine us for camping here. She said that she lives in the area and walks this national forest road that we're camped off of all the time with her dogs, goes horseback riding on it. So she knows the, the laws and the regulations. She's lived here for 15 years and she knows that you are not allowed to camp here. Uh, she said that fire season just started and that is why you can't camp here now because there's a fire risk. So there's no camping now in any of the national for forests in the area. I research extensively on stuff like this and there was nowhere on the National Forest website stating that, you know, all of these free camping areas, you're not allowed to camp yeah. in during fire season. You would think that if you couldn't camp at them during fire season that there'd be this big thing, no yeah, camping no from camping this here. date to this date or during fire season or something. Well, that, that struck us as very weird because we've been staying in National Forest now for a year now yeah. and National Forests are our favorite places to stay. Yeah. So that it just didn't sound right with us. So we pushed back and said that we're definitely allowed to be here. We yeah. found this site on a map on the National Forest website that shows specific campsite locations on this National Forest road that we're allowed to camp in. And she didn't even hear us. It was, mm -mm. She just talked right over, as I was trying to explain this to her, she just talked right over me, raising her voice, and she was very clearly mad and upset that we were here camping in this area. Yeah, and that we weren't just leaving when she told us to leave. Too. Yeah, she basically 
she, she said she lived in the area somewhere nearby i don't yeah. know and said that during fire season campers like us are a risk to the forest and her home that we might start a fire and it starts this huge forest fire and will burn the whole forest down including her home and now i can sort of understand why someone would be afraid of that because you know jenny has family mm -hmm. in the driest parts of california where they really do have massive forest fires that do pose risks to people's homes yeah all the time so i can understand why she may be you know afraid of something like that happening but that doesn't give her the right to kick out campers yeah that are very much allowed to be there and then she threatens us and says that if we don't leave she's going to call the local fire department on us and they will come make us leave and possibly fine us yeah and now at this point in time i'm inside while david's outside talking to her and by talking to her, I mean he's outside getting yelled at by her <laughs> because he can't get a word in edgewise. Yeah. And I'm inside because I have a heart condition. It's known as PACs. It's not severe or anything, so don't worry about it. But what it is is when my adrenaline gets up, my heart goes crazy and I get dizzy and I don't feel good and all this stuff. So I'm inside trying not to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as she says that she's going to go and, go and get the local fire department to come out to us, I'm just like... I'll just call them right now. Yeah. So I called the local fire department. <laughs> Cause we, we know, we, it just sounded so bogus to yeah. us. Jenny was just like, well, pff, call them right now. Let's get yeah. this figured out. I just want her to leave by this point in time. Yeah. So I called the local fire department, explain to them what's going on, tell them exactly where we are. And then the person that had answered the phone, he just starts laughing <laughs> and he goes, why wouldn't you be allowed to camp there? Yeah, you're, you're in the national forest, right? You're not on anyone's private land. You're in the public yeah. land of the national forest. Yeah, and then, and I said, yes, we're, you know, this, we're on this national forest land. We're camped just off the road. Um, she's yelling at us because she says we're not allowed to camp here because it's fire season. He goes, well, it's fire season, but that just means you can't have a campfire. Yeah. We're just like, he's, he, and he goes, you're not, you don't have a campfire, do you? I, I said, no, there's not even a fire ring here. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah we, had, we had lit no fires. Yeah. We, we, we are yet to light a campfire. Yeah. Well, on the road. I don't know. It's just not something we do. It, this, it, it upsets Jenny's allergies yeah. and I don't like the smell of my clothes and stuff. Yeah, so. and then the whole RV stinks. Yeah. So we, we just haven't done it yet. We don't like campfires. I mean, I mean, they smell good, but still. So he tells us that, yes, we have every right to be there. He wants us to get her name. I say her name is Cheryl. Well, then, yeah, I, I then ask what her name is. She says her name is Cheryl yeah. and we relay that to the fireman that yeah. she's speaking with. And then I say, you know, I peek my head out the door and I, I say, I'm actually on the phone with the fire department right now and they're telling us we have every right to camp here. So now that we've got proof from the fire department that we're allowed to be here and we've just shown it to her straight up, yeah. she starts to back off a little bit, but then kind of like changes her angle. Yeah. And she starts to say that, you know, she horseback rides in this area all the time. And she, it, there are these people that shoot their guns and are like target practicing. And it's very dangerous for her to be riding her horse while these people are doing target practice. And the, the hunters will leave trash all around and other campers will trash campsites and leave trash around. And now I can understand why someone would be frustrated about those things, yeah. especially the trash, like trashing campsites, because, you know, that upsets me and Jenny, too, when, yeah. we, when we get to a campsite. And, and then there's, we, we have to clean it up before yeah, we can even camp there. There's litter all over so, the place. Yeah. But that doesn't, I know that doesn't give you the right to kick campers out. And not only that, but the people that are using firearms in the National Forest, I've looked this up. They are totally allowed to do that. The rule is that you have to be 150 yards away from any campsite and you can't be shooting toward houses or campsites. Mm -hmm. So those people that are target practicing were probably in every right to be target practicing in the woods. The hunters, if it's during season and they have permits, totally allowed to hunt there. And campers and RVers are totally allowed to be camping in the National mm -hmm. Forest. Just like she's allowed to be horseback exactly. riding in the National Forest. But she is just upset that all these people are using her forest for things that she doesn't like. Yeah. So she sees two RVers, uh, you know, she sees an RV in her part of the national forest and she wants us out. And then she proved what I was just thinking in my head and what I just told you guys. She referred to all the people target practicing in the woods, hunting in the woods and camping as wahoos ruining the forest. Yeah. And so at this point, I'm just like, okay, 
I am done with this woman because she just insulted us. She mm -hmm. doesn't know us, but apparently yep. we're wahoos ruining the forest. Yep. So I closed the <laughs> RV door on her and she got back in her SUV and drove off. Continuing down the forest road, by the way. Yeah, and then something <laughs> hilarious happened. Yeah. The fire chief of the local fire department that Jenny just called, called Jenny back on her phone mm -hmm. and asked where we were staying at because he wanted to come out and just make sure that everything was good. Because mm -hmm. from his perspective, he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't yeah. know maybe we're in the wrong and this person is actually trying to tell us something or maybe she's yeah. in the wrong, and, but he just wanted to come out to our site. Yeah, and we were totally cool with this. If he was gonna come out and for sure tell us either yeah. yes or no, we can't be here, then we were either going to stay or yeah. we were going to leave. So I go ahead and tell him exactly where we're located, what National Forest Road we're on, how far we are off the highway, all this good stuff that he's asking us so that he can come out and check on us and you know make sure that we are for sure in the right. And then he wants to know the description of her vehicle and what her name was. And when I said that her name was Cheryl, he says, hmm, I wonder if that's Nutty Cheryl. And we lost it. We did, oh we gosh. started busting out laughing. We were like, no way, there, this lady is like known as being sort of a, I don't know, a little off in the area and maybe she's been harassing people before. Yeah, so that, that made us feel a little bit better and he wasn't even there yet. And then about five minutes or so later, he shows up and before he's even finished getting out of his vehicle and we haven't even come outside yet, he says, yeah, you guys can camp here. And he just kind of starts cracking up and he was a really cool yeah, guy. He was really nice. Yeah. He, he even gave me his card and said, if, if she comes back, don't even talk to her. Just get her license plate number and call him. And then he will call the sheriff and have a sheriff come out and tell her to stop harassing campers. And we were just like, that awesome. is awesome. Thank you so much. While we're standing around talking to him, and you know, he's verifying that yes, we can stay here. Um, he does suggest that we still call the National Forest Service to make sure that we can, but they were closed that day. Um, I did call them this morning and they said, yes, for sure, we're allowed to camp here. I got all my information. I have a map for crying out loud that shows yeah. where the campsites are. I mean, I was 100% I was sure we were allowed to camp here. And then he starts asking more questions about, you know, what does she look like? You know, what is her, you know, what's her car look like? I say she has short blonde hair. She has a little dog in her car. It's a white SUV. He goes, he goes, yep, that's crazy Cheryl. <laughs> and it's just, it just, it's just crazy that there's someone like that, that the fire chief even is aware of as <sighs> bug in my face, <laughs> as just like, I don't know, someone that's just known for harassing people yeah, being or, a little off yeah, and something. I wonder what what else she's done to earn that title and then the fire chief actually came back today which is the day after all this happened and just came back to check on us and make sure that everything was okay and that no one else had come around to harass us any further and that was really cool of him and we so very much appreciated that oh we forgot to mention we forgot to say that she actually started um, before she left and found out, you know, that the fire department said it was okay that we could stay here and she didn't really have a leg to stand on with that argument. She s tried to start um, convincing us convincing to, us to leave. Yeah, she started talking about all these other campgrounds in that the area. That were so much prettier than this That were just one. beautiful, so much more beautiful than this. Um, and campgrounds, mind you, where there are other campers. Yeah, uh, she was trying to like she was talking about specific campgrounds in the area that were just gorgeous that we should go and see at least drive to to see and that was kind of weird because we were like well we like it here we this like is, it here we're all alone yeah, we're not by other people we're alone in the national forest this is what we like to do so mm -hmm. i don't see how those campgrounds could be worth packing up and leaving yeah. besides some of the ones that she was mentioning i had already looked up and they they're paid are, they're not free yeah 35 dollars <laughs> a night no thank you <laughs> but and then once she found out that that angle wouldn't work she started to try and scare us into mm -hmm. leaving and she said that there have been cougars sighted in the area not just sighted in the area but that she has seen yeah, them herself that she has seen them herself What's just on mean? the other side of the road she sure, might have maybe i don't know if i really believe that yeah. but 
but that didn't bother us either because there, I mean, there are black bears and cougars all over these parts. Like yeah. we know that they are in the area. That's why I am carrying bear spray. So like we're, we are prepared for something like that to happen because yeah. we know we are in their territory. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what I said to her. I was like, <laughs> we know that those are in the area. We've got bear spray to protect us. We don't let the dog out alone. We are always out there with her so that nothing bad can happen to her. And then once she realized that there was just no hope left for her, then, then she, she left. left yeah. So after she left, we were feeling very upset Ang uncomfortable angry frustrated yeah. and just felt unwelcome mm -hmm. and we were really anxious too we i don't know this was like it's our first time in oregon we're just travelers wanting to see the area and a local comes around tells us to get the heck out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like we're feeling really bad right now yeah, very very unwelcome yeah but the actions of the fire department and the fire chief coming out and reassuring that we were allowed to stay here. And calling the National Forest Service and them also confirming that we can stay here. Yeah, really, really reassured us and made us feel welcome and, mm -hmm. you know, found or made us know that we're allowed to stay here. So her, she was just some rogue person. <laughs> to, <laughs> rogue person. Just trying to, I don't know, just cause trouble. I, mean, I understand to an extent where she's coming from. You know, she doesn't want you know, her nearby national forest damaged. And, you know, we feel the same way. We don't want the national forest ruined. We want to be able to still camping them. But telling people that are in their right to be there is just, I don't know, it just really rubs us the wrong way because we know we're allowed to be here. And knowing that we're allowed to be here and having all this reassurance from the fire department and the national forest service has not made me decide not to do a campsite review here. Yeah. So there will still be a campsite review coming out of where we are because it's beautiful here. Yeah, it's her, absolutely beautiful. Her actions alone aren't going to stop us from staying here, and they are not going to stop us from maybe coming back here in the future, and they certainly aren't going to stop us from recommending to everyone else this awesome free place to stay in the National Forest. Now that we have gone through this and experienced it firsthand, even though we've heard stories of other people, our advice to anyone out there that ever experiences this in the future is to contact the authorities. No, Immediately. No matter what. Yeah. Um, luckily, she said exactly who she was threatening with. We were going to call the National Forest Service initially, but it was a Sunday and they weren't open. Yeah, so if you're staying on National Forest land, just immediately call the National Forest. Yeah. If you're staying on BLM land, call the BLM land office. You know, whatever, whoever is in control of whatever land you're staying on, mm -hmm. if someone is telling you that you need to leave, just immediately contact that office, get the facts, get the information, find out whether or not you are allowed to be there. And if you are, then you can just tell that person right off I'm on the phone with them right now and they say I can be there. Yeah, but if they continue and they persist, then you may very well want to have authorities come out to take mm -hmm. care of the situation for you. You know, have, you know, have a sheriff yep. come out or someone from the BLM office or the National Forest Office come out and say, yes, they can be here. Please stop harassing them. You need mm -hmm. to move on. You know, this is public land. However, there is a but to that. If someone is threatening you with violence or they are threatening in a way, like just the way they're standing, they seem very yeah. intimidating to you. We recommend leaving. Yeah, if you if you feel unsafe by this person, because people can be unpredictable. Yeah. And if you feel unsafe now, ever in a site, it is probably best to leave mm -hmm. because holding your ground just out of being stubborn isn't worth you know something bad happening yeah. thankfully this cheryl character <laughs> was not uh threatening us with violence no. she didn't seem um like physical force was anything that she was going to attempt so yeah. we weren't afraid of her we're not afraid still that she's going to do anything like that mm -hmm. so we're not leaving no. and if that's the case i say stand your ground yeah and push back if you know you're allowed to be there push back if they continue to harass you get the police involved get them out here and have them tell that person to stop harassing you yeah. do that still especially if someone is threatening yes. is threatening you still do that but after the fact 
it's probably best to leave. Yeah. Now we haven't had instances where we're, we've simply felt uncomfortable because of the people around mm -hmm. and we have considered leaving, um, you know, other places just because we yeah. were uncomfortable, but we were never confronted. This is the first time we've been confronted. Yeah. So that is our advice on if you're ever confronted and that is exactly what we're going to do if we're ever confronted again in the future. Yeah. Now that we've been through this, we know how we're going to handle it in the future. And the reason I say we know how we're going to handle it in the future is because because we boondock almost exclusively and we're out in the middle of nowhere often, we're pretty sure this is going to happen again. We haven't even been on the road traveling for a whole year yet and this has happened and there's no end in sight for us. Yeah. So we're pretty sure it's gonna happen again, so we'll end up taking our own advice. Yeah, especially because we stay on public land so often, and for whatever reason, people just build like this false sense of ownership yeah. of these public areas. They feel like, for whatever reason, their rules need to be followed, or everyone else just needs to stay off of their part of the public land. Yeah, because, so, because they live nearby. Yeah. So it's their public land, not everybody's public land. It's yeah. not public, it's just theirs. Yeah, no one person <laughs> owns the National Forest. No one person owns BLM land. But, you know, people, they just feel like, oh, this is my site. This is my part of the forest. What are these, what are these campers doing here? Mm -hmm. So we're, yeah, since our RV adventures are going to be going on for quite a bit longer, <laughs> pretty sure we're gonna run into this again. Now, like we said earlier in the video, we're sure some of you that are watching this have had this happen to you, or at least something similar to uh, similar like this happen to you too. And just like misery loves company, yeah. we would love for you to share your stories in the comments below. And other people that are reading the comments may very well be like, that happened to me yeah. too at that same spot. Or, yeah. you know, something like that. So any weird traveling, weird camping, or odd RVing experience you guys have had, please share it so that we know that we're not the only ones. <laughs> I'm sure it'll make us feel better. Yeah. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want more videos from us, be sure to subscribe. And if you want more details on what we talked about today, be sure to check out the link to the blog post in the description below. We'll catch you guys later. Bye.